heavy downpour blurred my vision, and I squinted to look ahead. In the darkness, Amina's eerie face emerged. Suddenly, she dragged a hammer step by step towards me. As she walked, she muttered, My darling, come closer to me. I was frozen with fear, totally unable to move a muscle. I could barely manage a weak little sound and couldn't even let out a scream, grinding her teeth as she raised the hammer to strike. Ah! I woke up terrified. It turned out to be a nightmare, but the dream was so real, enough that it haunted me until now. Hi, I'm Dash, a professional photographer. Like and subscribe to Life Diary Animated Channel to listen to my story. I usually spent my time on the streets taking beautiful <laughs> shots. That day, while engrossed in capturing street corners, a beautiful girl accidentally appeared in the frame of my camera. As if fate had orchestrated it, I fell for her at first sight. As I approached to introduce myself, a guy <laughs> rushed in and hugged her. Alina, have you been waiting long? I just got here. Look at you. You're all sweaty. Seeing the two of them being affectionate and leaving, I vaguely guessed that the guy was her boyfriend, but just because she was off the market didn't mean I would easily give up. Back home, I contacted my friend, a detective, Mark, and gave him the photo I took of Alina. Mark quickly gathered quite a bit of information about Alina. She lived alone and owned a high-end leather bag store. I began plotting to win over the girl. I frequently visited her shop, seeking her advice on various leather bags as an excuse to talk more with Alina. I also regularly gave her flowers and engineered chance encounters. We became increasingly close. Perhaps she had feelings for me too. I find Alina quite unusual. What? Watching Alina the entire time, I clocked that she never hits the grocery store. But she's like a master chef at home, whipping up all sorts of meaty dishes, sometimes even a whole feast. And get this, one night, when Basil went to her place, he never came back out. Like, zero sightings after that. Maybe she orders takeout. And speaking of Basil, maybe he just ghosted after you left. Mark was still suspicious, but I quickly rushed to Alina's store. Basil was nowhere in sight, which could be my shot at getting her. I stepped in and she was there, crying her eyes out. I rushed over and gave her a friendly pat on the back. And when she spotted me, she jumped into my arms. Basil, you ditched me. After hearing that, I felt like a chessboard just opened up in my stomach. I tried to comfort Alina by patting her back. A week later, I mustered the courage to confess my feelings, and Alina nodded in agreement. I was over the moon and immediately shared the news with Mark. That night, Alina invited me over for dinner at her place. She was in the kitchen cooking. I went to help in the kitchen, but I stopped, dead in my tracks, when I saw Alina rummaging through the fridge. What caught my eye was the odd collection of black plastic bags scattered inside, and one of them was torn open, revealing a bloody chunk of red meat. I quickly covered my mouth and turned away before Alina could notice. Throughout dinner, I struggled to focus, my mind bouncing between thoughts of that meat and what Mark said. Where on earth did those bags of meat come from? What is Alina hiding from me? Alina, what are those black bags in the fridge? And why is there human hair in the trash? <laughs> Dash, what are you thinking? The fridge just has some pork my mom sent over a few days ago. As for the hair in the trash, it's mine. Stress from work lately has caused my hair to fall out, so I've been to the doctor and I'm on medication while adjusting my work schedule. She knew I still had a few lingering doubts, so she handed me a prescription while she opened the fridge to let me inspect. But how could I even do that? Alina was a kind-hearted girl, yet here I was doubting her. I rubbed my head and then pulled her into an embrace, a sense of guilt swelling inside me. Alina, I'm sorry for the misunderstanding. Alina just <laughs> smiled brightly, playfully planting a kiss on my cheek. After shaking off the doubts, Alina and I headed to an island for some R&R. &R. We went yachting together, tried our hand at paddle boarding, and indulged in some fresh seafood. And that night, we had an amazing night together. After the trip, I found myself crashing at Alina's place more often. I chuckled without even realizing it. 
Today, Alina invited me over to her place for a meal. She said she learned a new dish and wanted me to try it out. As I was happily heading there, I bumped into Mark. Dash, what have you been doing to your body? What's up? Everything's fine. And her cooking skills just so good, I might have to put on some weight. From what I know, Alina's ex-boyfriend also gained a lot of weight after dating her. She's got some culinary magic for sure. Hey, don't tease me like that. You comparing me to a pet or something? The two of us stopped arguing when Alina returned. <laughs> she politely greeted Mark and invited him to join us for the meal. While we were eating, Mark suddenly experienced stomach pain and left. A little while later, Alina also got up. I wasn't bothered, too absorbed in the delicious spread. I devoured the food, losing track of time as I patted my overfilled belly. I heard Alina scream. I quickly rushed toward the source of the sound. I found Alina sitting on the floor, her clothes disheveled. And Mark was there, standing and looking in my direction. Did this jerk take advantage of me being away to do something vile with Alina? I was furious, lost control and charged at him, throwing punches. Dash, it's not what you think. Shut up, get the hell out of here. No pervert's a friend of mine. Dash, stop, please. She collapsed into my arms, sobbing. I held Alina, comforting her. Listen to me, give me a chance to explain. Alina, she... <laughs> at that point, Alina's body suddenly trembled in my embrace. She pressed into me as if afraid of something. You don't hear what I said, huh? Shut up and get the hell out of here. I don't want to see you anymore. Mark helplessly covered his face and left. It turned out he intentionally spoke ill of Alina in front of me to sow discord and then attempted to harass her. I was determined to make him pay a hefty price for that. So the next day, I hired some thugs to go all crazy, wrecking stuff and causing a ruckus at Mark's office. When he showed up, it was already a complete mess. And there was Mark, looking all dumbfounded as the empire he built got knocked down by me. That was the ending he totally deserved. I got back home when the sky was getting all dusky. Alina was rocking that white dress. She was looking all pure and angelic. Alina's got that soft smile on, gently caressing my face. Looks like we're out of meat at home. Tomorrow, I'm gonna fill up that fridge with some fresh meat bags. I raised an eyebrow in confusion, and Alina led me into the romantically set up dining room. What's the occasion today? Dash, today's harvest day. Huh? Oh, I got this big order, so I thought I'd throw a little party to share the joy with you. With the candlelight dancing around, we were sipping on some red wine and having a good time, but then suddenly, everything in front of me started fading. Waking up, all tied up in this old, creepy warehouse was a real trip. Hanging around were these stretched out leather pieces, all worn and tattered. The sound of a knife being sharpened in the next room gave me the creeps even more. And then, the room's door started creaking open, and Alina walked in, casually stroking my body and nodding like it was all normal. Alina, what are you gonna do? Dash, we ran out of meat. What, what do you mean? Do you love me? You said you'd sacrifice everything for me. While she was saying this, she was scratching at her clothes really hard. Her eyes were showing these intense red veins and her pale face contrasted with that bright red lipstick. She was looking like a darn monster. Alina, get a hold of yourself. <laughs> I'm calm. If not, I will mess up this leather when I work on this. What the heck? You know, with this body, I can design a bunch of new leather bags. I'm in shock. My mind's blown. I turn my gaze to the leather piece next to me. Could that be Mark B. Basil? And that leather? Oh, you're insane! What have you done to Basil? Alina looks at me with this twisted <laughs> smile and then walks up to that leather piece, caressing it and pressing her face into it. Dash, don't you see? Basil, he's still here. He's right here in this room. I can feel his warmth. You. You. It won't take long. You and him will become a part of the collection in my shop. She just giggled and casually sat on my lap, her demonic little hands exploring my body like they had a mind of their own. I was thinking about Mark and how I misunderstood and brushed off all of his warnings. <laughs> you know what? 
I purposely appeared in front of you, got you to take photos, and even dug into your habits and likes to make it easier to get close to you. And by chance, I overheard the conversation between you and Mark that day. I knew Mark was suspicious, so I planned to turn you two against each other. You're wicked! Well, blame your own gullibility. <laughs> Until now, I know her true face. Turns out her target is guys, and she's been fattening them up like crazy. Once they get all plump, and their skin becomes the juiciest. And when the timing's right, she peels their skin off to make bags out of them. It was all coming back to me. So that meat I'd been eating all this time? Oh, what was it really? I never would have guessed that behind that angelic face was a cold-blooded demon. I've got to get out of here. I struggled to pull the rope against the chair's edge while trying to create friction to cut the rope. As I made it outside, I saw Alina wiping down a bunch of hammers of different sizes. Next to her was a container filled with heaps of bones, and the floor was smeared with yellowish liquid and scattered bits of meat, a foul stench hitting me hard. Alina bent down and pulled out a hammer from underneath. My darling, why don't you go out of here instead of waiting for me inside? I pushed Alina down and rushed towards the exit door. Thought I was about to make it out. It turns out this is some desolate, completely unfamiliar place. I patted myself all over trying to find my phone, but it was nowhere to be found. Unexpectedly, I found the detective badge in my pocket that Mark had given me before. I hid behind an iron crate and tried to activate the badge to contact Mark. Mark, where are you? Help me! The badge flickered on and off. I tried restarting it multiple times and kept repeating my plea for help. My darling, don't hide anymore. Come out here with me. I was trembling all over, holding on to hope with all my courage. I turned around and Alina's face was right there. She raised the hammer and swung it down hard, but I managed to dodge it luckily. Dash, you will never get out of here, and you can run me either. Alina raised the hammer again, and I quickly stood up, pushed her down, and turned to run, but I slipped after a few steps. Please, let me go. Just let me live. Alina didn't respond, just slowly dragged the hammer with every step forward. The rain started falling, each droplet washing away the mascara on half her face, her lipstick melting into red streaked on her white dress. Alina smiled, tilted her head, and waved me over. I was so scared that my whole body froze up, unable to move. Please leave me be, I beg you. Alina, like a wild beast, roars, and with the hammer in hand, charged at me. Right before the hammer was about to hit my head, I managed to grab it. At that moment, I was fighting with death, a battle I must win. I wrestled Alina down and pinned her beneath me, quickly grabbing the hammer and throwing it far away. Out of nowhere, a sharp pain shot through my leg. I looked down and saw a branch piercing it. I hold on to my painful leg, exposing myself to give Alina a chance to escape. She was furious, her face pulsing with anger. How dare you ruin my leather, you miserable fool! She threw herself on me. I tried to resist, but she pushed me down. It looked like this might be where I meet my end. I slowly lost hope. The only regret I felt then was about Mark. I remembered the joyful memories we shared, how I failed to cherish that friendship. I realized I was greedy for a love that wasn't meant for me. And now I'm paying the price, way too steep a price. Suddenly, someone rushes in and knocks Alina down, then runs to my side. Dash, are you okay? Alina grabbed the hammer, ready to charge, but two police officers restrained her and an ambulance arrived just in time. I let out a sigh of relief and then fainted, probably just too exhausted. When I woke up again, I found myself in a hospital room. Mark and two police officers were waiting there. Mark helped me to sit up. Are you feeling all right? I'm good, thanks. I need you to provide information about what you witnessed and what happened last night. Mark stood beside me, patting my shoulder to reassure me. I nodded and cooperated with the police, recounting everything that happened. When the police left, I couldn't help but wonder how Mark managed to find me. <laughs> Remember this? The detective badge? Yeah, I keep it on me at all times. That night, while I was fixing the badge, I saw it flash. I could hear your voice, but there was no way I could get a word to you. I knew you were in danger, so I sought the location. 
Luckily, I found you. I was feeling so embarrassed. I couldn't even look at Mark. I totally messed up his career, but he ended up being the one who bailed me out. Mark, I'm sorry. It's nothing. As long as you're all right. Did you find a new place yet? Yes, I did. Let's build it together. Come on, worry about that later. Just keep off your feet. Almost immediately, newspapers, television stations, and online platforms all synchronized to broadcast the tale of a girl who had murdered numerous victims to craft bags from their skin. Meanwhile, I'm in the process of losing weight, and during this time, I've turned my experience into a book titled Beyond Greed, Embracing What's Truly Yours. It's a reminder and a wake-up call. I leveraged the influence of the book and also released the detective badges that Mark designed onto the market. I know I can't undo the mistakes of the past, but at least now, I won't hurt my friend again. Not even once.